Good evening. Welcome to ORP TV. I'm Craig Stagner coming to you from the JK Auto Repair Studio. JK Auto Repair is a full service car care provider located in Ozark, Missouri, 2301 West Selmore Road. Go over and see Zach and John. Let them take care of you the way they've always taken care of my family. This is the All Parts Auto Salvage Midweek Report. All Parts Auto Salvage with two locations in Springfield alone. 2600 North Benton is the salvage yard where they've got everything you need, full cars there, uh, just you name it. They've got it there. And then 425 East Kearney is the parts store. It used to be the bread store if you can think back that far. Walk right in. It's a, a parts store. They've already got some parts pulled. Uh, Chris is up there. Let out and Chris to help you fix your car. Even if they don't have the parts you need in stock, Thanks to their network of uh, other suppliers, they can reach out across the country and get you the parts you need to help you fix your car. All Parts Auto Salvage is a great, great sponsor. I want to thank our other sponsors, as always, to start things off. Uh, along with JK's Auto Repair and All Parts Auto Salvage, we have Hillbilly Speedway in Fairgrove, Missouri. Hanja's Tree Trimming, we guarantee the best work at the best price. Finkbinder Transfer and Storage, we're not good because we're old, we're old because we're good. Home Sweet Home Realty and Associates, Renee Frizzell and her crew, let them help you find your dream home. They are a fantastic realtor. Uh, Rochelle Summers, Toys for Tots, does a great job of making sure that every year, Hundreds of children around the Ozarks have toys that they may not have otherwise. Appleton Imaging, Missy and David Appleton, great photographers, anything you need done. Sigs and Swigs in Nixon, Missouri, as well as DTA Determination Through Attitude and Bear Paws Gloves. Our pal Eric DeBats is a super, super guy. Well, I want to start things off. Last week, we didn't have the results on Sunday for Saturday from the Missouri Stock Car Racing Association Speedway USA at the historic Bolivar Speedway, but we got those results for you now. In the late model class, back-to-back -back wins for Brian Brown. Also, back-to-back -back wins for mod winner Ricky Eisenhower and his son in the street stocks, Trevor Eisenhower. So those three, back-to-back, -back, your charger class was Ronnie Taylor, and Matt Leach takes your Super 6, uh, Historic Bolivar Speedway, Speedway USA, the only asphalt track in the state of Missouri operating. So if you want to see asphalt racing, that's the place to go in the state of Missouri. Now, coming up this weekend, it's a big one. It's race number two of the Titans of 10-5 series, uh, the Rumble in the Heartland. This one is going to be here at the... Uh, Mid-America Dragway, let's zoom in on that a little bit. That's his coming up weekend. Uh, Larry Hunt will be up there announcing with some of the uh, track owner and their staff. Not going to make the trip up this weekend, but they do have a lot of classes, a lot of money payouts. You have the Outlaw 10.5, the Ultra 5.5, Mean 6.5, Pro Tree Big Dog Class, the Pro Tree No Pox. Pro Tree Motorcycle, Real 7 Index, and the Pro Tree Junior Dragster. Uh, a lot of great sponsors there. And if you're up near Mid America Dragway, you don't want to miss this one. This is a great, great event. And they've got these good looking shirts. They sold out of them, I believe, here at Ozark last year for the first race. So if you're up that way, you want to get one of these good looking shirts. Uh, I suggest you buy two one to wear and one to hang up. You always want to buy two that way you have uh, got an extra for sure this week making the news in the gander rv and outdoor truck series in nascar i want to thank my buddy alan bledsoe who turned me on to this story i hadn't heard about it as of yesterday um, this series as you know started out as the craftsman truck series and uh, a couple years ago it moved over to the uh, Camping World, Gander RV, it's all part of the same company. Well, there's no question that um, Marcus Lemonis, who owns Camping World, has been a big, big fan of racing. Uh, not only did they sponsor this, uh, last year when the NHRA's partnership with Mellow Yellow expired, Camping World jumped right in and took over that. Well, this last week, 
Sheldon Creed, who is your defending champion of the Camping World Truck Series, uh, has had some sponsorship issues getting sponsors on this truck. Um, this is a truck that they ran, I believe, on Sun on a Friday night. Uh, there was some mention about it being a white truck, and I couldn't quite get it all lined out here what the issue was there. But either way, Sheldon Creed has been very vocal that they need more sponsors in Camping World Truck Series. Uh, specifically, he himself says he's the defending champion. Well, I, I think we could all agree that uh, the racers need more sponsorship. That's certainly what helps make things go. Problem is, is that he has turned down an offer. Turns out, Marcus Lemonis, starting with race number one this year, said, guys, we want to help you out. Uh, especially the teams that don't already have a logo up here on the hood. I'll give you $15,000 to put Camping World logo on your hood. Everybody. I don't care who it is. So, of course, that benefits the um, lower tier teams that don't have a big sponsor on the hood already. You say $15,000. I believe it's a race. So, this is big money. Not only that... <clears throat> If you and he didn't even care what place you finished, 40 some trucks have done this, including Sheldon Creed back at Las Vegas, did it for one race. He said, If you put this logo on your hood and you win, I'll give you a hundred thousand dollars. So while Sheldon Creed was complaining that there isn't sponsorship, if he'd have put a logo, Camping World Truck Series or Camping World logo on his hood. He'd have put $115,000 in his pocket. And his response was, well, our team's worth more than $15,000. Okay. Well, if you'd have won like you did, your team would have had $115,000 for that one race. Uh, that may not mean everything to Sheldon, but I bet you there's some tire changers and uh, some crew back there that wouldn't have mind splitting $115,000 if you'd have let him put another sticker on the front there. So kind of getting the impression uh, that Sheldon Creed may be uh, a little bit of a uh, whiny baby is uh, one way of putting it anyway. Not the words my wife used to describe it, but anyway, that's Sheldon Creed. And I kind of got looking at him and a little off topic here. I thought, man, who is that that he reminds me of? Kind of whiny and complaining. And then if you're old enough to remember Caddyshack, he kind of looks like Spalding. Kind of a lot like Spalding. Kind of a, uh, yeah, that's just who he reminded me of there. So uh, Sheldon Creed, how about you put that sticker, put one big decal on the hood, put the other one over your mouth and let your uh, driving do the talking. Moving over to motocross, big news in motocross. The Supercross season just ended, as we know. Uh, Eli Tomac had been the defending Supercross champion, lost that this year to uh, uh, Cooper Webb. Well, Team Kawasaki and Eli Tomac have both uh, let everyone know that they've had a mutual parting of the ways. I'm not so sure how mutual that was on Eli Tomac's part, but nonetheless, Eli Tomac, uh, who moved over from Honda to Kawasaki five years ago in 2016 from Honda, has won 60 races in those six years. So he's averaged between the indoor and the outdoor 10 wins a season, uh, the most of any rider in the AMA. He's also won four titles, three outdoor in a row, uh, and one Supercross title. So he's had, in this six years, averaged 10 wins a year and won four titles out of a possible, during that six, 12 victory, you know, 12 with uh, Supercross and Motocross. So he's won 25% of the titles and had averaged 10 wins a year. I'm, here's the problem. In Supercross Motocross world, uh, Eli Tomac's getting old. He's 20, he'll be 29 in November. Uh, problem is that Adam C. and Cerullo is, uh, I think, 22, 23, something like that. 
and is going to be uh, has been on the radar to be a stud for a long time. There's another there's a look at Eli at his Supercross number and back at his Motocross number, which led us to think, well, who then possibly would Kawasaki move up? Because they have not announced who their second rider would be. Austin Forgner, I I'm telling you right now, that ain't happening. He hasn't been able to complete a 250 season. All the talent in the world can't race a full season. Not going to happen. Seth Hamaker, pretty good rider. I don't think that will happen. Uh, Joe Shimoda, just finished second in the Supercross season. Love this young guy. Too young, not going to happen. Jordan Smith, uh, that's not going to happen either. The strongest possibility, I think, might be Cameron McAdoo if they keep it from within, but it could be someone else. Uh, where's Eli Tomac going to go, you wonder? They say Yamaha. Uh, who does that displace? Because you've got Dylan Ferrandis, you've got uh, uh, Joey Savacci, you've got some good riders at Yamaha. They've really been coming on. They feel like this is... Them getting Eli Tomac is kind of like some... Uh, Maybe the Rams or somebody trying to get Aaron Rodgers at this point. Get this guy that's towards the end of his career, but a veteran and some leadership. Remain to be seen where Eli Tomac ends up going into next year. Saw news this week that uh, over the past weekend, fortunately, this is uh, when you see this next picture, you'll know why this one was important. Jeff Lutz from Street Outlaws. Uh, one of the nicest guys out of that whole crew you'll meet. Just a super, super sweet guy. This is him, I think, yesterday. So he's fine, thank goodness, because that mess over the weekend was what was left of one of the best-looking cars you'll ever see. And somewhere around here, I didn't pull up a picture. I've got some uh, autographed pictures of Lutz's car but that 57 Chevy is as uh, good looking a car as you'll ever see. And you don't want to see uh, sawgrass in your uh, 57 Chevy there. So fortunately, he's okay. Glad to see that Jeff Lutz was talking to everybody and uh, safety equipment. You're seeing more and more cars. Some of these cars, uh, this happens. That's why you don't do this on the streets uh, if you're an amateur. Because these guys aren't amateurs. They're professionals. Uh, keep your racing at the drag strip. This is a photo from this week. I don't even remember who took it, and I'm sharing it just because, just because. It just made me laugh. Uh, I just thought that was maybe the best photo of the weekend. Uh, just a great picture. If that doesn't make you, kind of make you smile, I don't know what will. Cute picture of uh, this last weekend's racing action. Here's a look at your birthdays brought to you by Hodges Tree Trimming. Hodges Tree Trimming, we guarantee the best work at the best price. Hey, get a hold of Chris, Franklin, or Charles. Let them come out. They do stump grinding. They do tree removal. They do all kinds of things here. Pruning, trimming, removal, planting, grinding, uh, free estimates. Give them a call. They're great sponsors of ours. Happy birthday today to uh, BMX racer Caden Maurer friend of mine, uh, she's a manager at one of the AutoZone over in Ozark, Missouri, Chrissy Campbell, drag racer Dustin Avendet. So happy birthday to you three today. Coming up tomorrow, Philip Caddy, Robert Haydenreich, Rue Taggart. We've had Rue in studio here before, uh, uh, just a super young man. Uh, race at Lebanon I-44 Speedways, trying some other racing things now, uh, just as Really, really good guy. Happy birthday tomorrow. From the drag strip, Jamie Andrews and Angie Chemist both birthdays tomorrow. This is one birthday I wanted just to, to stand alone here. This is my wife's cousin, Jamie Green. Jamie has a birthday coming up tomorrow. I believe he'll be the uh, double nickels, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think he's 55 tomorrow. Uh, hey, Jamie, I love you. I hope you have a great birthday tomorrow. Coming up on Friday, nephew to Missouri Motocross Hall of Famer Chad Brixey, Mr. Kyle Brixey. Happy birthday, Kyle Brixey. On Sunday, this guy's like a big brother to me. Uh, at my weekday job, uh, his him and his family just couldn't mean any more to me than they do. 
uh, one of my best friends in the whole world, Jeff Cowden, with a birthday. Happy birthday, Jeff. Um, another former in-studio guest of ours with a birthday on Sunday, Nicholas Bradshaw. Nicholas driving a new car. Uh, Going to be driving at the Historic Bolivar Speedway, Speedway USA. Great, great dude here. Lloyd Lay with a birthday. Outstanding guy. His, he's got a great story. I love Lloyd. Mr. Bond, T.L. Bond, the Buddha. Happy birthday coming up on Sunday, Buddha. Monday, Dalton Minix, Samuel Pyatt, Sammy Elliott, and Brendan Boatride. Talked to him yesterday about his birthday coming up. On Tuesday, Amber Linder and Robert Feeney. Happy birthday to all of you from Hodges Tree Trimming and ORP TV. Well, here's a look. Ugh. Here is a terrible look at the weather forecast. The outlook from Appleton Imaging. Appleton Imaging is the all-service photographer. Give them a call at 417-234-4992. Friday, may get some racing in on Friday. Thursday night should be okay. Great tomorrow for Spokes BMX. Friday night racing should be good. Saturday, Depends on when that rolls in. Sunday, even worse. I got to looking. Here's what Weather Underground that we use is showing. Here's where we are, right? Uh, showing partly cloudy. And then Saturday, look at this. Rain starting on the uh, 15th all the way through. Man, I hope that's wrong. Otherwise, we have two weeks of rain. We may not be racing this weekend or next, and depending on how saturated it is, could be affecting that one. So let's hope that uh, that weather underground is really wrong. Your home sweet home opener for this weekend, brought to you by Home Sweet Home Realty and Associates. Let Renee Frizzell and her crew help you find your dream home. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram, 417-221. 6466. Tell Renee that I sent you. Lake Ozark Speedway has the, scheduled their home opener that was supposed to be last weekend. It's supposed to be this weekend. We'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. Again, all of this is real tentative. We'll be keeping an eye on the forecast and uh, all the closings. We'll have those for you. Right now, Friday night, Jeffers Motorsports Park, Mocan, Ozark Raceway Park, and Tulsa. On Saturday, Bon Terre, Centerville, Jeffers, Memphis International, Mid America Dragway, that Titans a 10 5 race, ORP, and Tulsa Raceway Park. On Sunday, Centerville, Memphis International, <coughs> excuse me, and I believe that that is a, um, let's see here, I believe that that's a road course race, yeah. Uh, Porsche Club of America on their road course. Memphis has dirt track, drag strip, road course. Uh, so that's a little bit of a different event. Tulsa Raceway Park on Sunday. Friday night, Circle Track, Batesville, Dallas County, Humboldt, Lakeside, Lucas. Uh, drag boats this weekend. Hey, they may be fine. Uh, Old 71, Randolph County, and Salina Speedway. Saturday, 81, Central Missouri, I-35, Lake Ozark, Legit, Nevada, Salina High Banks. Speedway USA, Springfield, Tri-State, and Valley. Extreme Dirt. Again, Saturday, Iffy, Hillbilly Speedway, uh, Hooter Holler, KC Raceway with Friday, Saturday. Spokes is tomorrow night. State Line Speedway and our pals at Twister Alley Raceway on Saturday. Pro Series moving over to Dover. Xfinity Series on Saturday at 1230. Cup Series is on Sunday at 1. NHRA is four wides from Concord, North Carolina. That's always a lot of fun. These are all on FS1. The finals are on Sunday at 5 o'clock. One more thing before we get out of here. <clears throat> this is uh, one of the girls that we sponsor. Absolutely think of her like a, like a niece. Would love her. Kenzie Bracado, super fast. Hell of a racer. And that's her dad, my buddy Tony. Uh... Kenzie fell, broke her collarbone uh, last week. I uh, hate it for her. Uh, so many broken collarbones in motocross. Um, we were talking a little bit about that over the weekend. But Kenzie is bound to determine that she's going to get back to racing way before the doctor says she could. She is tough and she is good. Mississippi girl, thank the world of her. Uh, Kenzie, we, Mary and I send your best. We love you. We hope you're feeling better and recuperate soon and be smart, all right? 
That's going to do it for this Wednesday show, ORP TV. We thank you so much for joining us and for spreading the word and uh, sharing and those some of those reviews we got, uh, those uh, good reviews and recommending us on, on the Facebook page really helps us uh, get noticed. It means a lot to us. So we'll see you back here Sunday. Hopefully we'll have we'll have for sure Friday results. Um, we'll see about Saturday ones, but uh, we will see you back here on Sunday at 6 p.m. for ORP TV Live. Until then, I'm Stag.